Former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo has said Nigeria is slowly becoming a failed, divided state and the poverty capital of the world. Mr. Obasanjo, who said he has never seen the country in such a bad state, blamed the current state of the country on poor management of the nation's diversity. He made the statement in Abuja at a consultative dialogue attended by various social cultural groups, including Feniferi Middle Belt Forum, Northern Elders Forum, Ohanezim Dibu, and Pan Niger Delta Forum. While he warned against the call for war and secession, the former president said for Nigeria to successfully tackle its challenges, the problem of disunity must first be addressed. Joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Babashala Adekwe. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Now, first of all, do you share the sentiment of the former president that Nigeria is becoming a failed and divided state? That is if Nigeria has not even been a failed state. I actually agree with Baba Basanjo on that. <clears throat> because um, looking at this, uh, looking at this government, don't let me start with this government. Actually, let me start from 1999. The government from 1999 has not done anything to unite the nation. If I remember very well, I had the Sharia court of judgment started in 19, between 1999 and 2003, when some state came up with their own Sharia law, telling them we are no longer going to make use of the federal government constitution, we have our own law. So what does that mean? The division has actually started from there. That's number one. Number two, I remember also during that period also when the ambassador to Sudan approached the president and informed him of a group of youth having a, a military training somewhere in Sudan. And he said he suspected that these guys are being used by politicians in Nigeria to disintegrate the country. Obasanjo was informed. He was aware. But because some people said no. It's just a war, it's a war against the, the, the North. So everything died that way. I remember there was a time sometimes in Plateau State that the Obasanjo had to call the Khan chairman a fool because the Khan chairman called on him to tell him that, oh God, you are just sitting there, you are not doing anything. So that is the beginning of a failed nation. I am not in ignorance of what happened before 1999, but let's face from 1999 that Baba actually added a government that time up to this. So for this government, this government, yes, they can claim that they are improving on security. I will only say the only area that can say improvement is maybe kidnapping. Because to an extent, I've not heard so much news about being someone kidnapped here or not. It's not that it's not happening. You get. But let's look at the situation of things in Southern Kaduna. We have a president who has not said anything about the killings in Southern Kaduna. We know about the Castina. The, the, the governor in Castina actually visited the head of the militants. And they, I don't know what they gave to them for whatever uh, something happened. And after, did the killing stop? No. In the South, in the southern cardinal, the cardinal state government visited the military. That he also said that he gave them money so that they will stop killing. What has the president gone done about all this? So for me, it's like we have a government who is not interested so much about the situation of things, the security in Nigeria, and he has shown so, so much from like 2015 to let us understand that his interest is basically in, in a certain area. You get not in the interest of the world. I'm not saying he's not doing some things. I'm not saying he's not performing some area. But let's look at that. He has in any way unite the nation? No, he has not. Even if you look at the appointment that he has been making. Yes, some will say, oh, Ogun State has the highest number of people. You are looking at that by state. Let's look at it by the region. You will understand what we are talking about. So former President Olusegun Obasanjo just said, the reason why things are the way they are in the country is because of poor management of the nation's diversity. How then do we begin to address these issues? When we talk of poor management uh, of the nation's diversity, we are talking of managing, um, managing different tribes to let everybody have a sense of belonging. Yes, that is what we're talking about. But 
for this, I will agree, also agree with him on poor management. Because if you look at what is happening in the country nowadays, there are some tribes that have been neglected. There are some tribes that are having upper hand. If you go to all the ministries, if you go to all the parastatas, you will discover that most people in those, in those offices, they are not announced. So there are some places that you even get to that even the top five or six people occupying those, uh, the positions there are actually not announced. So in what way? If looking at those things, it shows you that there is no interest of some tribes in the government. It's just basically for the interest of a certain set of people. So if you now ask, what has this, uh, this thing that they signed, that they used to recognize, uh, I just don't know, I forgot, that it should be done uh, across all the regions, um, code of conduct, you know, not even code of conduct, I'm trying to forget, when I remember I made mention of it. There was this law that states that let it be done across all the regions, recognize them. But no, they have put it aside. They have put it aside. It is not about our own interest. It's about the interest of a tribe. It's about the interest of a part of nation. It's about the interest of a group of people. It's about the interest of a, of a family. You get it. It's no longer about the interest of the whole nation. So for poor money and diversity, I would say, yes, poor management 100%. So in talking about diversity and division, we saw that uh, the former president also talked about, uh, also warned against uh, uh, war and secession. So how important is this warning? Well, secession um, is very important. But for me, if there's going to be any secession, personally, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. Anything that will happen, let it happen. But for secession, if it's going to happen, the Nigeria I know of today, most especially the government, will not want secession to happen. So definitely there is going to be what we call war. But for any secession to happen in the world, what I know is that let there be a table talk. Let's discuss, okay, how do you want us? Let's have what we call a, 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 a discussion among all the tribes. And let's say, okay, if, if, just like what we have, the confab that have been done, okay, there are a lot of uh, decisions that, okay, let some resources be taken back by the state and no longer the federal government. Let the federal government be waking. I can tell you, when we have all those things, the secession plan will not even come up again because each region is not taking care of its own resources. Unlike when the federal government is taking, is, is the one in charge of most resources, that is when people will be saying, because if you are from the Niger Delta and you discover that the resources that are being used from the Niger Delta, the resources are getting from the Niger Delta, they are using it to develop a, a certain part of the country. Then you have every reason to cry for secession. If the Lagos state is looking at, oh, the, most of the VATs that the government is claiming that at the end of the day, they share to other nations. Let's look at the Northerners. They don't want, they don't want alcohol in their state. They don't want cigarettes in their state. But the VATs that they are making on alcohol and the, the what's it called, on cigarette, the, the Northern nations are benefiting from it. So for me, if there is a session, if there is a, if there is a control of resources by each region or by each state, secession uh, call will, will drastically reduce. Okay, so another issue uh, the former president raised was the, that uh, the review of the constitution is a money-wasting activity. What do you think about that? It is a money-wasting act activity, actually. It is the responsibility of the National Assembly to give us the new constitution. Upper Sanjot tried on the constitutional review uh, Good luck, Jonata also did his own. We all know how much went on that way. At the end of the day, nothing happened. That of Jonathan could have gone easily. But what happened? It failed because the National Assembly will always want, the, uh, the, uh, when that thing was thrown up, it, there should have been what we call, um, the, the federal government should have made a, a, should have made a policy that the people, the public the referendum, yeah, that should have been a referendum that would have attested that particular constitutional review. But this was not done. Yes, they were waiting for the National Assembly. They were passing the bill to the National Assembly towards the end of Jonathan's government. You get my point? Towards the end of Jonathan's government. So for me, if the National Assembly, that has, the people that have been are elected to represent the constituency of each, failed to do that, then for me, 
<laughs> that means we are not ready for anything. So calling on different group, calling on different uh, association, calling on different union to come and converge in a place, and at the end of the day, you are paying them maybe 20,000 euros per sitting, you accommodate them, is a waste of money. It is the responsibility of the National Assembly to give us a new constitution. But maybe they don't understand why they are there. But maybe they are just there for their own personal interest. All right. Thank you so much, Babashala Adigui, Public Affairs Analyst, for discussing this with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure.